1015 FM K Don. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the number one professional wrestling radio show in Las Vegas. This is the Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. Going bell to bell with the best in professional wrestling news, entertainment, and lots of Sin City surprises from inside the squared circle. Now, let's get to all the exciting pro wrestling action and bring on the host. Here is Mark Hoke. And we are back for our number two of the Mark Hoke Show, the best in pro wrestling news and entertainment on 101.5 FM K Dawn in Las Vegas. And of course, we are live here in LA for WrestleMania, having a great time and getting ready for night two of this unbelievable, spectacular. That is WrestleMania 39. And of course, I'm joined by Joe DeFalco from Future Stars of Wrestling. Check out everything they're doing at FSW at FSWVegas.com. Joe, how's your morning going? Having a good time? Oh, tremendous. Words can't describe it. Awesome. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Brian Brodovich from, from Las Vegas Wrestling Scene. Um, uh, I, I literally mouthed, <clears throat> mouthed that. I can't believe the mic picked that up. I really can't. Yeah, I apologize well, for that. I, when you're like, I heard you. I'm like, what? I didn't hear me. <laughs> like, what? So uh, there's no way to top how good Joe's doing. So I just won't even make an effort. Yeah, it. of course, we're off site and uh, my esteemed boss mark but he is running the board taking care of business over here and it's a it's a new experiment for everybody a little bit for us we haven't the uh, first time we've done a remote so having a good old time hey so mark so was it more than you expected like you had a picture of what it would look like the whole mania experience not just the show itself uh, more than you expected or i would say yes it, it, okay it was i i am I mean, I was just amazed first by the work that the, just the media team and the PR team have to put in. I mean, they are running around like crazy. It, it is nuts. I mean, we were at waiting to get in line or in line waiting to get in and get our credentials, and we got there pretty early, so we were there in front. And just the amount of people that they had to check in was crazy. Wow. And then when you, you get in the stadium – and you see a, the massive production pit, the huge set, and as 80,000 people are filing into that stadium. I mean, it was unbelievable. Uh, I, you know, the lighting and just, I mean, it was, it was fantastic. And I, I know I was talking to, to Mark about this, just the amount of work that goes into that, I couldn't imagine the logistics of putting a show like that together. I really, yeah, it is, it is something special to say the least. So yeah. And so far it's pretty nice stadium too. I enjoyed it. I was going to say it looks beautiful. Yeah, it is pretty nice. So I certainly, I saw a lot of people complaining about it. You know, trying to get out of there yesterday, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I, I did have a little issue escaping from the bowl. Um, the three of us actually got put in different places that are down here from Kate on and uh, and odyssey and <laughs> we were i don't know what was going on that we couldn't move our line mark escaped from the the building just fine he was outside waiting for me say hey i'm outside and i'm like i'm still on the stairs about 10 rows up from my seat so there's there's escalators and stuff that come out i, I managed to use my press pass and hopped on an elevator to finally uh escape from sofi it was well it was kind of like you know a video game. It was cool, you know, but nice. uh, yeah, but, it, but terrific, uh, <laughs> but terrific place and had a, had a blast last night. Looking forward to tonight. As long as my ticket shows up on my Ticketmaster app, that would be nice. <laughs> but yeah, hey, surprise. Yeah. So let's start going through what happened last night. And uh, we've got a couple more interviews. We're going to try and run here too, with uh, alpha Academy and Rhea Ripley. We're going to hear from them. So starting off, guys, we had John Cena and Austin Theory, and uh, the two of them kick off the show. Of course, everybody's going nuts for John Cena, and Austin Theory is getting booed out of the building. 
that dude has some serious heat on him. And Theory gets the win. We had a ref bump that uh, ended up causing Cena to not get a submission. Theory comes up with the low blow and finishes off Mr. Cena. And Austin Theory, the U.S. champ, gets the win. Guys, good move, bad move. Austin Theory's road at this point. Uh, Let me start with you, Joe. Uh, to be honest with you, I I was pretty disappointed in the match myself. Uh, I love Austin Theory, and, you know, yeah, he won at the end, but they made it. And I know it's Cena, and he's a legend and the stuff, but it, it, if you're bringing somebody in to, you know, that was not passing the torch. It's like, you know, I, I, I don't understand, you know, the breakdown of, of of the match and Austin Theory got huge heat and you know they had to do the visual pin and you know I guess John Cena did do the job but you know it, it's always been talked about in the past about how you know he has to look as strong as possible I I didn't think he came in the best shape uh, I watched him and he looked like he was pretty gassed so you know overall uh, I think John Cena wrestling is kind of, you know, past its expiration date. I think he's kind of done. I think he kind of mailed it in, to be honest with you. Wow. Brian, your thoughts on this match? Ooh. Um, yeah, I, I tend to, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, agree with Joe. I think uh, I was very disappointed in the match. I was disappointed in Cena because one thing I always felt like you could count on was, was John giving it, was bringing it. it like, even if it was, you know, part time, at least that was my opinion, but this didn't feel like that at all. Um, he he didn't look big. He looked small. He didn't. It it just it was very flat. It was very flat. I, it, he looked uh, he looked old to me. To be he honest. did. Yeah, his hair was spray colored. Like you could not that that's necessarily bad, but it was just very like this is John Cena. Like that's what it when I'm looking at him, it, it just that's what it felt like to me. It wasn't a. It didn't make Austin Theory look great. It just made John Cena look old. Yeah, I, and, and I watched know, I, the Peacemaker, and John Cena looked in tremendous shape. You know, doing the movies and doing all the mm-hmm. other stuff, and he didn't look like in that shape, which you would have thought would have been easy for him to do. Mm-hmm. And you know, he just looked like, "Hey, John, you want to have a match next week?" And it's like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> Yeah, I will say that, um, you know, from my vantage point, I was sitting about seven rows up from the floor. So I was, you know, I was on top. You guys got to see on TV a little more, but I kind of see what you guys were saying a little bit. Uh, I I will say that the crowd was pretty into the match, but yeah, I I get your point. Without a doubt. They, they, oh yeah. You know, they love them, but uh, you know, as a fan and you're sitting there watching and what you're expecting, it was like, wow. Like the regression was just so much from the last time we saw them that long ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, next match on the card, we had the men's showcase. And, you know, I wasn't super excited about this until, you know, I watched SmackDown and then I was like, wow, this could be pretty good. And while it was kind of a little bit of a spot fest, still a pretty enjoyable match with Braun Strowman, Ricochet, Street Profits, Alpha Academy, Viking Raiders. Street Profits get the win. But there were some crazy things that they did in this match that were a lot of fun. And I, and I think it kind of lightened the mood a little bit after the John Cena match um, just real quick. Cause we got it. We got to keep it a little tighter. Uh, uh, Brian, first, your thoughts on this one. Uh, yeah, I thought it was, it was good. It was a fun match. It was definitely a spot fest, but I thought it was a nice comeback from the original match. That was flat. And uh, I think it was good to see the street profits get the win. You know, it was, it was good. It was enjoyable. More excited to see Braun and Ricochet train at the FSW arena, though. I thought that was better. <laughs> there you go. Joe, your thoughts on this one? Yeah, 100% on that. Right team won, but the, but they need to do something with them. You, you yep. can't have them keep going for the tag titles and not winning. It's, it's just it's past, past due. Yeah, and, and like I said, it was I thought it was for what it was was a, a blast. I liked the five man tower. I thought that was a terrific spot. I I kind of got a kick out of that. It looked amazing in the stadium, and everybody was going crazy on that one. So, 
a, a pretty good one there. Uh, next match, uh, we had Seth Rollins and Logan Paul. Boy, guys, did this one get just off the charts. Uh, crowd is going absolutely insane either way for both of these guys. Rollins was so over. Logan Paul was absolutely hated. You know, Paul does the entrance on the zip line just to kind of get the rise out of everybody. And then we get the prime bottle. And prime did not pay us for that. Unfortunately, we'll have to discuss that with them, uh, but <laughs> some crazy spots in there. You know, we had Logan Paul taking out uh, KSI who was in the prime bottle mascot suit. Just a very interesting match. And Seth Rollins does come out on top. Uh, and I, I thought guys pretty solid match. I thought the two of them did a terrific job. Uh, Brian, your thoughts on this one first. Yeah, I, I enjoyed the match. I, I'm a big Seth Rollins fan. <clears throat> I think that uh, the thing with him is when he was originally a face, I didn't feel like it kind of went over very well years ago. But now when he was a hardcore heel, he's kind of become the baby face. And I think that's what's gotten him over with the fans. And he do, he just wrestles great matches. I feel like he's bringing out the best in guys now. Um, I like Logan Paul. I like that he puts the work in. I like that he practices to get these right. Because there's, no, I don't like seeing celebrities embarrass wrestling and look like crap. So to me, I I enjoy seeing it. I thought it was fun. I had no idea who the guy was in the costume, uh, but I thought that whole thing ended up working out good too. So all around, I I enjoyed it. Joe, what'd you think of this one? Uh, that was the one match I didn't get to see. I heard great things about it. Logan Paul is awesome. He reminds me of The Miz, but just way better when he first came in. It was like he was this hype guy, reality thing, YouTuber, and he's gone in there, and he's already better than, you know, three-quarters of the roster. Yeah, I mean, Logan Paul was absolutely amazing last night. And, yep. you know, and, and you know, I mean, do you realize, guys, Logan Paul has wrestled – Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns mm -hmm. on massive pay-per-view events. I mean, that is, that's some trust in a celebrity type wrestler. And when you, when you really think about that, that is saying something about, about Logan Paul and got to give him credit and, and give, give Seth. Absolutely. Rollins credit. You know, and, and it's funny. Yeah, you know, I just guys, don't think he's perceived as a celebrity anymore. Wrestler. He's a wrestler. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And, and and it was funny that you guys brought up about Seth Rollins not getting over as a face, but then going heel and somehow turning himself into a face. And that really seems like that's a trend that's been going around through wrestling, that guys go bad and people like them more. It, it, you know, look what happened with Roman Reigns is another example. This seems to be happening a lot in pro wrestling. And Joe, you could probably speak to how that dynamic works more than, than any of us. Well, you know, in a lot of cases, the heels are always trying to be cool and they're trying to be, you know, liked. When Logan Paul came in, you know, from what I read, he was insistent that, you know, he needed to be the face and this is that. And the thing is, he his personality is polarizing. He's cocky. He's brash. He just walked into wrestling. Why would somebody like this guy? And he they tried to force it upon him. And, and again, I think he teamed with The Miz as baby faces, and we know The Miz is a way better heel, t heel too. So, you know, as he's maybe gotten more confidence and people have put over his work ethic and the, the matches that he had, uh, I guess he's more comfortable now and okay with being the heel because the bottom line is, you know, the fans are going to dictate whether you're a heel or a face, you're not going to dictate it. And Logan Paul is now in that comfort zone. And, you know, I'm excited to see, you know, what's next. You know, his brother lost a fight. You know, he steps in. You got a monster tag team right there that's going to get tons of views. And social media is very big with WWE these days. And I can easily see the Pauls being tag team champions. I totally agree with you on that. Uh, next match we had on the card was the six-man ladies match between Becky Lynch, Lita, Trish Stratus taking on damage control. And, of course, the Lynch, Lita, Trish team gets the victory on this one. Probably, from my perspective in the stadium, was the lightest reaction 
uh, that any of these matches had. I thought it kind of got off to a slow start, and then Trish got in, and everything seemed to roll from there. But uh, yeah, pretty. I mean, it was okay, but not not certainly not the best match on the card. Uh, Ron, your thoughts on this one? Yeah, same. It was okay. You know, it was. It's one of those legends matches. I at least that's how I looked at it. But uh, yeah, it was. It was fine. It wasn't great. It was. It was okay. I the finish or the end was predictable. I expected Becky's team to win, so that's kind of. It was okay. That's how I feel. <laughs> Joe, what do you think of this one? You know, it's WrestleMania. You're going to have some of those matches, those feel-good moments, and that was meant to be a feel-good moment. And, you know, they spaced it in the middle of the card, and, you know, no harm done. You got to see Trish, and you and you got to see Lita uh, together in a match. And, you know, that's what WWE is all about, bringing those legends back. Yeah, so, yeah, a lot of fun. I mean, you know, get a little nostalgia out of that. And, uh, you know, that's how it went. And, of course, uh, this is the Mark Hoke Show on KDON 101.5 FM. We are live in Los Angeles today as uh, we get ready for WrestleMania Night 2 and wrapping up WrestleMania Weekend. And, uh, you know, I'll tell you what, before we get into the Rey Mysterio-Dominic Mysterio match, I think maybe we should uh, head into a commercial break. Let's uh, kind of take a breather right now. And when we come back... Police cars, little Viva La Raza, little Eddie Guerrero stuff going on, little low riders, all sorts of fun things. And of course, a uh, couple of new champions crowned at WrestleMania night one. So stick around, everybody. We'll be right back on the Mark Hoke Show on K Don. We'll be right back. In a kayfabe world, LasVegasWrestlingScene.com brings you the real story. Las Vegas Wrestling Scene is the source for pro wrestling news, along with their up-to-date events calendar. Visit LasVegasWrestlingScene.com. 101.5 FM, KDON. This is the Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. Here again, your host, Mark Hoke. And we are back on the Mark Hoke Show, the best in pro wrestling news and entertainment. I am Mark Hoke. Thanks for being with us on 101.5 FM KDON in Las Vegas. Of course, we are live in L.A. going to Hollywood for the show, having a great time for WrestleMania weekend. And we're going to pick it up with Brian Ronovich and Joe DeFalco covering night one of WrestleMania Ray Mysterio, Dominic Mysterio, guys, and people are going to be talking about this match for a long time. Two incredible entrances with Dominic coming in with cuffed with police escorts. <laughs> we had Ray coming in with the low rider to Eddie's music. We got a, spank, a belt spanking from Ray Mysterio on Dominic interference from the Judgment Day, which got the Latin World Order, which was Legato del Fantasma. They've been rebranded. We got Bad Bunnies getting in there, kind of saving Rave from getting a chain to the head. And, of course, that's probably setting up what's going to be going on in Backlash down in Puerto Rico coming up next month. Guys, I got to tell you, I think this one is going to be one that people will be talking about for a very long time. The match was pretty solid, but, you know, pretty crazy. Uh, Brian, your thoughts on the Battle of the Mysterios in this one? Yeah, I, I agree with you on the match overall. It was solid. It had some cool little subplots to it. I thought um, the build to it was really good. They might have taken a smidge long to have Ray hit, it, hit Dominic, but nonetheless, I think Dominic did a terrific job as a heel. Once he made the turn, he embraced it. I, I'm not going to, I'm not comparing him for overall career, but it was, to me, it was real similar to kind of how the rock did with Rocky Maivia. He was a baby face, but nobody really, I, I didn't get the impression. A lot of people really cared for Dominic. They didn't care for Rocky Maivia. They made heel turns and everything changed. And I think Dominic embraced it. He still has the ways to go in the ring, but he embraced being a heel. He embraced the booze. He embraced the heat. And I think he helped a lot make that match. The whole story. Good. Joe, your thoughts? You know, he's been tremendous, uh, you know, 
once they they did what they did, I, I believe he's outgrown Judgment Day. I think Dominic Mysterio, you know, needs to be on his own. It's, you know, the, the heat is there. You know, him and Rhea Ripley are, are, are working. You know, I would have never thought I'd say, wow, the best uh, male-female tandem isn't Cross and Scarlet. It's Dominic Mysterio and Rhea Ripley. Yeah. And... You know, you, you got to definitely give credit because he's a guy, he kind of floundered in the beginning. It was like, yeah, hey, he's this young kid. He's green. He hasn't really trained to wrestle that much. But, you know, being in there with, with Ray and, again, it's being part of the business. You know, you might be green, just like Solo Sokoa. It, you know, you, you've been around wrestling your entire life. It, 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 it's probably way easier to pick up. And, you know, Dominic is in a great situation. You know, he's a guy that, you know, you put that United States or intercontinental or whatever it is down the line, you know, you can see him, you know, carrying a belt. You know, there's not many storylines that have really taken off other than the bloodline, but this one for sure. And the crowd was, you know, behind him a thousand percent. Uh, I didn't understand, you know, with, when I was looking at the odds, the odds were huge for Dominic Mysterio, if I'm not mistaken. So, yeah, you know, you could make right. good money betting on Ray. Yeah, there you go. So a pretty interesting situation. I'm, I'm guessing we're probably going to see Bad Bunny and Ray Mysterio teaming up at Backlash next month. That should be a lot of fun, too. Uh, and then now before we get into Charlotte Flair and Rhea Ripley, uh, I did get a chance to talk to Rhea Ripley at the uh, Raw Junket this week. So let's take a couple minutes and hear from the new SmackDown Women's Champion, Rhea Ripley. Uh, it means everything. This is my redemption story. This is where I get everything that I wanted so bad in that first WrestleMania. I get the crowd, I get the stadium, I get that WrestleMania feeling. I have my family here. I get to challenge for the SmackDown Women's Championship against Charlotte Flair, someone who I have been on record saying that I want to wrestle at WrestleMania back when we did the WWE PC videos on YouTube. Um, so this is just like a full circle moment for me sort of thing, coming back to it and just like, finally getting that shot to show everyone exactly what we've got and we stole the show the first time we stepped in the ring together so I can only imagine what it's going to be like with an actual crowd in attendance where we can feed off that electricity that they're throwing at us and get that adrenaline rush where we just want to beat the crap out of each other. <laughs> That's awesome well of course you're pulling some other duty here too you got to take care of Poppy right we got we got we got we got Poppy hanging around and that yep. match with Dominic Mysterio uh, taking on his dad. Yep. And you've been a bad girl on that. I you mean, really have. Come on. You know, you're invading Thanksgiving yeah, and Christmas. I do what I do. Uh, they welcomed us eventually. <laughs> Look, he's, especially the Christmas one, okay? Like, his grandparents, they were lovely. They told us to come. So we rock up. Ray and Angie, I don't know what was up with them guys, but they were not happy. So we, we obviously went outside, had a little... Little fight, Angie slapped me, and then Dom got arrested out of all people. <laughs> Angie should have been arrested. She's the one that laid hands on me. He didn't do anything. It's been fun to watch, though. Those, those pieces have been absolutely <laughs> amazing. But one thing that I think is interesting for you right now is you're supposed to be the bad girl against Charlotte, and it seems like everything you're doing, everybody's cheering for you. <laughs> How are you dealing with that? I think everyone just likes a good bad girl, you know? I, I love it. I feed off this stuff like no tomorrow. Like I I love going on social media and seeing everyone just react to things that I post because it's very mixed and I love that. I love having people question themselves and question others and just get the bickering started. I love a little bit of chaos and that's what I'm here for. You know, I think after you get this done and you, you win the SmackDown title, Maybe you ought to be looking at going after the U.S. title or the Intercontinental uh -huh. because you were beating up the guys out here, too. I mean, and it's really impressive to watch you go. Oh, thanks. Yeah, it's, uh, it's something that I've been doing since I was a kid, actually. I used to play tackle chasey uh, at primary school, and I used to tackle all the guys and make them cry. So we're just keeping the tradition going. <laughs> Very nice. Well, what, so what can we expect from you this weekend? What's going to happen? Absolute brutality. Rhea Ripley, mock my words is coming out of WrestleMania, the new SmackDown Women's Champion. 
Dom Dom's going to beat his deadbeat father, and Finn Balor is going to put Edge in the grave. Wow. And, uh, boy, that was a lot of fun talking to her, too. And I got to say, guys, she was right. That match with Charlotte Flair oh, man. was brutal. They tore each other apart with Rhea eventually getting the win in this one. But, man, boy, there were some rough spots in there. I I was sitting there watching, and Charlotte just took some serious mm. hits in this one. And, you know, Rhea comes out on top. First, uh, just thoughts on the match. Uh, Joe, why don't I, I'll give you the first shot. Uh, you know, I saw all everybody posting about how great it was. I, I didn't see it that way. You know, maybe it was because it was early on. There was a lot of miscues early, and there was a lot of botches, and they're praising it as, like, the greatest women's match of all time. And, and maybe the commentary took me out of it, and, you know, it picked up, obviously, at the end. But... You know, when you have 20 near falls, of course it's exciting. Everybody's, you know, oh, two and three quarters, two and nine tenths. But the 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 first third of the match I thought was horrendous. And then it picked up after it. So, you know, as good as the last part was, the first part was that bad for me. So, to me, it was a pretty good match. But I can't get out of my head how many screw-ups there were in the beginning of it. Brian, your thoughts on this? Yeah, I I agree with Joe. I I I thought it was a better match than I think Joe did. I thought it was real good um, because I love I I don't care for tons of near falls, at least like that. I don't like to see tons of kicking out of finishers, but it is WrestleMania, so obviously you know the special moment and so forth. Um, but it was exciting. Um, because I expected Rhea Ripley to win the whole time, but uh, you know there were times when I was questioning it. But the beginning was really flat, and I I thought it was going to start with a little more a uh, little more energy, and it just seemed it took them a while to get going. But they did finish really strong, and that that was important to me. So I I liked it. See, and I guess you know not seeing it on TV and being in the crowd. I couldn't, you know, maybe I couldn't see some of the things that, that you guys saw with it being up close, but I, I, the, the crowd was just going nuts in this match, and I thought, you know, the pacing seemed really good live. Uh, I enjoyed it thoroughly, and uh, just, you know, seeing some of the, the hits Charlotte took, and oh my word. I, well, the face plant, that face plant was, oh, cra- was crazy, yeah. That was rough, but mm-hmm. it'll, be, it'll be interesting to see where they go with Charlotte after this. Looked like she might have been going a little, little psycho at the end, sitting there just kind of curled up in a ball and Rhea towering over her. But it was a lot of fun. And and by the way, I want to thank Rhea Ripley for her time. And what a terrific person she is, by the way, guys. She is so nice. I've heard that about her. Oh man, what a what a pleasure to talk to her and you know wish her all the best. So we'll see what happens after this with Rhea Ripley bringing the SmackDown Women's Championship to the judgment day then we had a impromptu match as Miz and Snoop Dogg were hosting Wrestlemania doing their thing and uh, Miz put claimed to put out an open challenge and uh, guess who shows up Pat McAfee that's right kids the NFL punter of course has that great Pat McAfee show Pat comes down and the Snoop declares the match. They get into it. McAfee gets the victory. Um, a little, I'll give you the perspective from the building. It was a little flat, and Pat was trying to get the crowd going, but I think it was kind of a tough spot for these guys because everybody knew what was coming, and I think they were kind of exhausted from Charlotte and, and Rhea, and I, I think that's why everybody was kind of like, eh, you know, okay. This is nice, but, and you know, it was what it was. I mean, it wasn't a bad match or anything like that, but you sure know, it was. I, yeah, it was. Okay. It was terrible. Right. It, was terrible. It, it really was. I agree, Joe. It's like you say it's a flat spot, but if The Rock or Steve Austin came out, it wouldn't have been a flat spot. 
It was like people were hoping for somebody huge and as well as Pat McAfee's like. The guy hasn't been gone. He was, he was he was gone. He was back at the Rumble. He was gone again, and it's it's been like a month. He isn't like one of the biggest WWE superstars. It's like if The Rock came out, the place would have went bananas. If 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 Austin came out, it wouldn't have mattered that it was against the Miz. It was the fact that they saw him. It was like it was Pat McAfee and like. They're begging to have this match, and it's like, really? The Miz who beat John Cena at WrestleMania is is afraid to have a match with Pat McAfee? It's just like, it was just absurd from the beginning to the end. Fair enough. Yeah, that was, and when Pat, where I was watching the show with a bunch of people, when Pat McAfee came out, everybody was just like, really? Really? Seriously, like what, I just don't Bobby know. Lashley, I, maybe. Yeah, like I was expecting a thunder and got Pat McAfee. When did when did Pat McAfee have to have a mania match? Like I feel like he has one every year now, and it's I don't understand. He's he's good, but I don't. That to me was a big dud overall. Yeah, I, I, and I think maybe they overestimated Pat McAfee's popularity. Definitely. And that one, and, and I, like I said, I think everybody was a wiped out and B you're getting ready for the main event. So, well, like Joe said, they wouldn't have been wiped out. If the rock had come out, it wouldn't have made any difference. Everybody would have been fired up. You know, it wouldn't have mattered. It, it was Pat McAfee. It's his fault. Just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. All right. And uh, main event, we'll get last match of the night before we uh, go to the next break and talk about tomorrow or this evening's action. The Undisputed Tag Team Championships, the Usos against Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens. What a war these guys had. Man. Insane crowd reactions the whole time. Ton of great near falls. I got to tell you, from being in the arena, this was just an unreal atmosphere, and it's, it's something that I'm never going to forget. That is for sure. And these four put on a show, and well, you could just tell Sammy and Kevin were just thrilled to be in this spot together after all this time being, you know, working on the indies and Ring of Honor and so on. Um, I, I I don't really know what to say other than that. I mean, it was just an incredible. Um, incredible match and incredible moment for WrestleMania. Uh, Brian, what do you think? Yeah, it was a great match. Great finish to the show. Um, it, yeah, I loved it. I thought it was, it was good from the beginning. The early where, you know, Usos are dominating Sammy, I, Sammy kicking out. I just said, I don't really care for kicking out of finishers a bunch of times, but I felt like that was like, Sammy was just really bringing the crowd into it. The more he kept getting out, like, Oh my gosh, he's surviving. It, yeah. I, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was great. Joe, what'd you think? I think anybody who complained about that being in the main event spot is, is just looking for something, uh, as, you know, big a match the women's match was. This was Sami Zayn's WrestleMania moment. Like, this was his redemption. And unfortunately, yeah, it's the tag team titles. And, you know, in a couple of months, it'll probably mean a lot less. But Sami Zayn has been really the star of the Bloodline storyline that you had to give him his moment. And it had to be in the main event. And, you know, where they go from here, who knows, you know, but right now that was the moment. It's once in a lifetime that you're going to get these tag team match as the main event, but it was deserving and, you know, people loved it. That's what wrestling's about. Like they wanted to see Sami Zayn win something. And he finally did. And, you know, you could just see the legitimate look. You know, you look in their eyes, you could see they were welling up. They, it was such mm -hmm. a big moment for them. And, you know, it's easy to forget sometimes because, hey, you know, wrestling's predetermined. They already knew they were going to win. But it's the fact that they did. And there was 80,000 people going nuts for Sami Zayn, you know, who, you know, a year ago was just some guy who was on a random show here and there and probably wasn't even used that much. And now look at him like he's really the MVP of the year. Yeah. And, you know, it's funny that you you said that about the people going crazy and and so on. I was sitting there watching that match 
and saying to myself, you know, it's funny that this is a predetermined activity that we're watching and people were just absolutely going crazy and loving it. And I'm sure that that translated to everybody that was watching on, on TV and oh, yeah. it was, it was just something else. And, you know, like I said, it's going to be a, a night that I won't forget. We'll see if it gets overshadowed by Cody and Roman tonight. We will talk about that match and a whole lot more. And uh, we'll take a break and come back and discuss night two of WrestleMania. We'll fly through that. So stick around, everybody, for more on The Mark Hoke Show on KDWN 1015 FM. Stick around. More pro wrestling news and entertainment when we return. Get ready for one of the most exciting and interactive events on the pro wrestling calendar. The 57th Annual Cauliflower Alley Club Reunion at the Plaza in Las Vegas. Meet some of your all-time professional wrestling favorites. Check out the wrestling memorabilia. Participate in terrific seminars and star-studded events, including Tuesday and Wednesday night CAC Awards and Dinner Nights. Visit CaulifloweralleyClub.org and get your tickets and membership today. That's CaulifloweralleyClub.org. Tired of the same boring food when you're out for breakfast or lunch? I'm Mark Hoke, and I have an idea for a different place to go with unique food you're sure to enjoy, and that's Unique Eats. Take some time out of your busy day and stop on in to Unique Eats, featuring celebrity chef Dominic Tedesco and his friendly staff. Whether it's a great start to your day with one of Unique Eats' amazing omelets, or lunch with his incredible sandwiches, pasta, and award-winning pizzas, you'll be in for a fantastic dining experience that won't break the bank. Unique Eats also features a smoothie bar and full vegetarian menu as well. Plus, if you need catering, you can count on Unique Eats no matter what the occasion. So what are you waiting for? Get on over to Unique Eats at 3100 South Durango, Suite 100, open daily until 3 p.m. Call them at 702-992-3038 or visit UniqueEatsLV.com for their full menu and catering info. Break out of the same old routine and have a great meal at Unique Eats today. 1015 FM K-Don. You're listening to the number one professional wrestling radio show in Vegas, The Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. Now, here again is Mark Hoke. And we are back on The Mark Hoke Show, the best in pro wrestling news and entertainment on 1015 FM K-Don. Las Vegas, of course, we are live in L.A. for WrestleMania weekend. Brian Ronovich from LasVegasWrestlingScene.com and Joe DeFalco from Future Stars of Wrestling. You can check out at FSWVegas.com. If you want to train to be a wrestler or just watch some great independent wrestling, get over there to FSWVegas.com. Um, and before we get into WrestleMania night two, real quick, I want to mention to everybody, don't forget about the Cauliflower Alley Club, the 57th annual cauliflower alley club reunion is coming up august 28th through the 30th at the plaza hotel and casino and uh, get your membership guys go to caulifloweralleyclub.org and you can join up it's 25 bucks for the year you get the newsletters and everything else plus you get to go to the reunion so please make sure you do that and of course if you want to join our patron program you can uh, make a one dollar donation every month to them through with that five bucks you're giving to us so please do that. You can go to markoakshow.com and sign up for that as well. But get your tickets so you can go to all those great events there, including those two banquets and meet a ton of your favorite wrestling wrestling superstars. So check that out. Cauliflower maybe, Alley maybe Club. Even a wrestling sh- maybe even a wrestling show. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah, Sin Bodhi hit me up. We're talking about possibly doing something again this year. So we'll see. Awesome. So mm. we'll keep you up to date on that one. See, we got the inside scoop. That's what man. we do. We got Las Vegas That's covered, insane. man. That's right. That's right. All right. Okay, so let's talk about what's coming up tonight, guys, and okay. some terrific matches this evening. Let's start off with that triple threat for the Intercontinental Championship. Gunther, the champion, defends against Sheamus and Drew McIntyre. Our friends at Bet Online. Dot AG have Gunther as the favorite minus 130. Sheamus is a plus 150. Drew is a plus 350. So not liking the uh, 
Mr. McIntyre there. Uh, Joe, your thoughts on this one, but we got to keep this pretty quick. So, well, yeah, I guess they're talking about Drew's contracts coming up. All I hope is they don't have Drew and Sheamus and Gunther not get pinned because then we have to go through more Sheamus and Drew McIntyre. We're friends. We're not friends match, though. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Brian? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, it'll be a heavy hitting match. I think we expect that. You know, I, I think Gunther retains. Yeah, I think Gunther's going to retain too. And this is there's a lot of terrific matches still sitting out there for Gunther. And uh, as he yeah. wants to break the honky Double tonk pin. record, pin them both. Give them the run. Ooh, Double there you pin. go. There you Ooh, go. A little Roman Reignsy finish there. That would be all right. Uh, we have the women's WrestleMania showcase match coming up this evening. Liv Morgan and Raquel Rodriguez. Natalia and Shotzi, Ronda Rousey and Shayna Baszler, and Chelsea Green and Sonya Deville will be duking it out. We'll see if they can put on a show like the guys did. Ronda Rousey is apparently coming into this match with a broken arm, as we have heard. So Rousey hurting a little bit. Uh, right now, your favorites on this one on betonline.ag are Rousey and Baszler, a minus 2,000. <laughs> 2,000. That means you can probably make about a penny. Yeah. You put 100 bucks yeah. down. Uh, and then it's uh, Liv and Raquel at plus 300. Shotzi and Natalia, 1,000. And uh, Sonia and Chelsea are plus 1,200. Uh, Brian, what do you think? Yeah, hang on. So I'm going to make a bet real take out a second mortgage so I can bet on Rousey and uh, Shayna Baszler just so I can make a little bit of money on it. <laughs> yeah, pick up a quick hundred. Just bet $2,000. You're good. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I like – Oh yeah, oh yeah. I like uh I like Ronda and Shayna. I I did before, you know. I think it'll be a, it'll be fun to watch. Yeah, Joe, real quick your thought. Yeah, in the I don't care match of the night, I'll pick uh Ronda and Basil. <laughs> I agree. Fair, fair enough. Fair <laughs> I'm enough. Nicer. That's what you get from Mark Hope Show, kids. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Edge and the Demon Finn Balor. So we get to see the Demon this evening in a Hell in a Cell match. Uh, another battle between Edge and and Balor. Uh, guys, uh, this one, sh I think this is going to be a pretty fun match. Uh, and right now, dead even on this minus 120 for both of them and i kind of agree i'm not sure who's going to win this uh joe what do you think uh i think finn balor has to win it's like are, are you going to let this guy ever win or are you going to make the 50 year old win all the time fair enough right i love edge he's great oh, so finn balor you know he leads the judgment day let him win <laughs> i agree Ryan? i yeah i think finn should win I hope he does. He he deserve, He doesn't really have that big win. I mean, he really doesn't. So I'd like to see him get it. Yeah, I think he needs it too. I would want to. I agree. Agree with you there. Um, you know, it's funny, Joe. You were talking about a match you're not excited about. Brock Lesnar and Omos. Omos coming up here, of course, with MVP in the corner. Um, this is going to be an interesting match, boys. I I, I hope it is better than I think a lot of people are expecting. Uh, let's see. And our betting odds on that one, we've got uh, Brock at minus 400, almost plus 250. Brian? Um, well, yeah, I, th I think Brock wins. I mean, but at least I would think so. Uh, I, I'm interested. We'll see. We'll see. I, I kind of I don't have a real opinion because it could be. I think if it's good at all, it'll surprise me. But I just I'm kind of real iffy on this one. Yeah, real quick. <laughs> uh, almost in Strowman was pretty good. Uh, I but it, I, I'm it, I have shades of Undertaker versus Giant Gonzalez here. So oh. but I got to go with Lesnar. <laughs> they can't have Lesnar lose to him. Yeah. You, you know what? I'm going to say Omos wins this match tonight. Just for fun. Just, Just to, be, to different. be a contrarian. All right. And then we've got uh, Asuka and Bianca Belair. Bianca trying to defend her Raw Women's Championship. And we have on this one Asuka as the slight betting favorite, minus 130. Bianca's minus 110. Joe. Asuka has to win. You, again, you did all this stuff. You changed her character back to the old Japanese style. Having her lose... Might as well send her back to Japan. Good point, Brian. 
Yeah, I think she should win too. I agree. Uh, you know, maybe you could take Bianca to face Rhea, but I I think Oscar wins. All right, and then of course the main event of the evening: Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns for all the gold here. And there may be a new belt available coming up here soon. Cody is a minus eight hundred. Roman plus four fifty. First time we've seen Roman as a non not the favorite in a long, long time. Brian. Cody. I think Cody wins. I think they've built it very, very well to this point, and I think that's how WrestleMania ends with Cody with the title. Joe? You know, it's it's night two. It's the main event. They're going to want to send the fans home happy, but I do believe we're going to get Lashley in L.A. night also. Ah, that would be that would be a lot of fun. L.A. Knight was getting mm. sheared at SmackDown heavy, by the way, so I could definitely see that. Yep, I would imagine Cody's going to walk. Got to have one FSW guy on the show. Jesus. There you go. Right. So, so we'll hopefully see Cody walking out with the title, and we're going to be walking out of here and headed over to SoFi Stadium. Guys, Joe, no, thank you, you so will, much. No, we. Th- now, we as a collective. So... Thank you so much for joining us. Guys, we will see you next week on the Mark Hoke Show. We're going to have a Cauliflower Alley Club guest still to be determined. So thank you for that, Uh, Brian Blair. We appreciate it. Guys, we'll see you next week on the Mark Hoke Show. Follow us at Mark Hoke Show. Facebook on Twitter. Facebook, the Mark Hoke Show. MarkHokeShow.com. YouTube, the Mark Hoke Show. Just check us all out. And thank you for listening to the best in pro wrestling news and entertainment. We will see you next time on 101.5 FM KDON. Want more of The Mark Hoke Show? Follow us on Twitter at Mark Hoke Show, like us on Facebook at The Mark Hoke Show, and visit MarkHokeShow.com to keep up with everything happening with the show. And remember to check out all of our archive shows on YouTube at The Mark Hoke Show and download our podcasts at MarkHokeShow.Podbean.com and all your favorite podcast outlets. So join The Mark Hoke Show family today, and thanks for listening.